other people are doing. You master what they're doing, and then you stay in front of change. You create the new change that everyone else is moving with. And that's the best advice I could give you. Um, when you're wanting to do things, uh, build things, it don't matter what you've got, you could find anything out there. I come from a poor family, four brothers, three sisters. Brothers and my dad in one bedroom, my mom and the girls in the other bedroom. We were really poor. I mean, uh, my Christmases cons consisted of construction paper, uh, plastic scissors, paste glue, which does not taste good, but it smells good. Um, cra uh, crayons, markers, tape. And from that, it built this uh, inspiration to um, an imagination to, well, I don't have that toy, I'm gonna make it. And, um, and, and it, it built from there and from there, and you could do it. And that's how I actually got hooked into this industry, watching shows, growing up, science fiction and stuff. So with that said, you know, five years later, <laughs> um, I'm doing this, and it's what I love. You only do what you love. If you don't love what you do, it causes stress. I, I'm not saying you're not gonna stress in any job, but if you love something and you're passionate about it, go for it, do it. If you only have one life, it's short. I'm 49. I don't even remember, I, I, I don't know where it all went. Here we are. So, first only thing I wanna talk about is how I came up with the swords. And naturally we had artists, illustrators that contributed to the concept of what we were gonna do for Ryan in the second film. Um, I do have liberty to make changes and things like that, and I did. Um, I love Japanese swords. I study Japanese swords. I'm not a master, I'm not, you know, great at it, but I'm intrigued enough that I've researched so much. I've read books and everything on it. And um, Japanese patinas and, and stressing out weathering and stuff. So I took to, um, let me show you this. Now I didn't do the swords for the first movie. That was done by another company. But this is one of Ryan's hero swords from the first movie. And um, it's simple, but it gets the point across. It, it is a really nice looking piece. Um, and um, it's well done. And it fits to Deadpool's theme um, without distracting from the, the, the outfit and everything. Um, and um, this is just flat aluminum with a beveled flat edge. Um, so you say, well, how can I do this at home? Well, you can do this at home, actually. Uh, there's products out there called EVA Foam. There's another product, Wobla, I can't pronounce it. Wobla, Wobla. Warbla. Warbla, Warbla, yeah. <laughs> Which is another good product. So, um, how you can do this. Go to a hardware store or anything like that. You can get rubber dowels. You can get flat aluminum, really thin. You can get a hacksaw and a marker and a file. You could create a really thin piece of aluminum to the shape, smaller than the actual blade, thinner than the actual blade. Then you get EVA, EVA thin foam. And you could sandwich the two together, gluing the two together. So now you've got a thick piece of foam with a structure on the inside, right? Now, to thin it out, EVA foam sands. It, it sands and it cuts, so you can make a sanding block and sand it down to give you the thickness you want, the shape you want, and, and now you've got a blade that you can paint to do this. There's many different paints, out flats that you could use to get you this look. The rubber handle, this is rubber, it's solid rubber. You can go to um, any uh, Blix Arts, has uh, carry smooth on products. You don't have a uh, you know smooth on distributor near you for a two part mix of rubber uh, that you can mix up. Uh, you could create a, a one a two piece mold that you can throw away um, if, if, afterwards, and you could create this part with a piece of wood and uh, shape it, sand it smooth, and that slides on. You know, put a slot in the center, slide it onto your already existing foam thing, and then you make a mold that you can then you know, uh, mold this handle over top of the foam uh, so it's one piece and solid and you can paint it. You don't want to do that, more foam. Foam, foam, and shape it. And literally, just take anything around the house that you can find. Nails, I use nails. 
um, and then I grind them or file them into shapes, round shapes or point shapes that I use to scribe or make indents. Foam, you can heat up uh, the foam and you can crease it and, and, and score it and everything. And you can literally come up with stuff like this. Now, for the second film, they, they want, that we had actually had a budget that, was, uh, that we can do creative stuff with. Now, how I did this was researching Japanese swords. I looked at many different style uh, katanas. Uh, katana, in translation in English, is sword. But it also could be a descriptive word because a katana is a certain length, a certain cur curvature, single edge, and, and, and the tang a certain way. And, you know, we can go back and forth on its translation of katana. I actually have people emailing and saying, oh, katana is a sword. That's all it is. And it's like, I'm not going to argue. Okay. But what I chose was, and a katana, for the record, is anything over 23 and a half inches typical and long. This is more than 23 and a half inches blade. Um, and it's curved and it's single edge. <laughs> so, uh, but this front end, and I did not know this when I researched some of these blades going back to like 900, 900 AD. A lot of their blades were like this. And I, I thought they'd be rounded, but they're not. So what I did like is um, uh, the uh, shape of this. So this little area here I took from one sword. Then from uh, uh, then from uh, from the 13th through the 16th century, I literally took different aspects of different swords to come up with a base shape. And it didn't stop there. Um, they started incorporating uh, uh, what they call a height, and this is a groove in here on each side, which is more of a uh, a structural thing than uh, some people think it's a blood group, it's not. Um, so if you know what an I-beam is for structural uh, reasons, then that's exactly what this is. Um, the other thing that I took into account was another, I think it was like 13th century, I looked at the cross section, so I cut this and look at it this way. Most of the swords were one third of this is flat, and then it's a flat sanded or, or polished edge, so they would take this and take this, and they would lap it on a, you know, on a stone for hours, just little sections to sharpen this, and you would get a flat edge like there is on that. But on this one sword I saw, it had one third of the blade here is flat, but then this section, it's it's curved like this. And I thought that was really unusual and, and really cool. So I took that from that sword and um, I incorporated it into uh, Ryan's new swords. And from here to here, that's what you've got. So this is 900, 988 AD, 13th to 16th century, somewhere near it, just pulling from different swords. Even the, with, uh, the beveled edges up here is from another era. The tang, exactly how they did it back then. So, for all intents and purposes, this is exactly how the Japanese would make their uh, their blades uh, before um, doing anything more to them. So, some details you don't even think of in the film industry. Now, how would you take this away for what you do at home? Same thing. Uh, you can you can get aluminum, a uh, flat piece of aluminum, uh, from any hardware place and. Uh, shape this. You know, it's going to take a while, you know, if you don't have a bandsaw or something, you could take a hacksaw. Believe me, back in the day, I didn't have all the really cool tools I got now. And I did things by hand, and it, it was a pain, but it worked. You could do aluminum, and um, you could take files and aluminum really files easily and make the shape. Or you could do what I said before, um, a rod on the inside of this with two pieces of foam to give you the structure. Um, and, uh, you know. um, now, let's uh, talk about finishes. Now, what I did for the metal sword was, uh, we went back and forth on uh, Damascus steel, no Damascus steel. And, uh, I, at one time, I was going to make real Damascus steel. 
and that would have incorporated folding uh, different steels to create this pattern. Uh, not very practical in the time frame ahead, so I'll give you a little tip you can use at home. If you make some type of trinket or something like a pendant or something, you want to do some engraving, you don't have an, an engraver. What you do have is um, a Radio Shack Online. There is a product, um, it's an acid, it's called ferric chloride. It hates aluminum. And um, uh, what you do is go online, buy it, it's really cheap. You know, like a, you know, probably a pint or a quarter of it. And um, how you would create this look is uh, Super 88 or 33 electrical tape, 3N. <laughs> Get that at any hardware store. Put it over top of your piece. When it doesn't matter what it is. If it's aluminum, it doesn't matter. Whatever the shape is or whatever, it doesn't matter what the pattern is. Just make sure that electrical tape is fully adhered to, and there's no air bubbles and stuff. Then you take whatever pattern it is you want, it could be anything, and draw it on a piece of paper. Tape the paper over the electrical tape. Get yourself a brand new X-Acto blade or a little hobby knife, and you cut out the pattern. With that, pull the electrical pieces off to bear the aluminum underneath. Take your um, uh, fair chloride, brush it on. Before you do all the electrical tape, sand this, clean this smooth, so there's no residue on the aluminum. But when you put that fair chloride on there, about 10 seconds, you're going to start etching like this. And then take a mixture of water and uh, baking soda, neutralizes the acid. Brush that on or put it in a bucket and uh, then you go to the next section. Do small sections at a time because it will eat the metal really quickly. How I did the prototype on the first sword was exactly what I just told you. Nothing fancy. Electrical tape. I cut a blood drip pattern on the blade. Fair chloride. They looked beautiful, sent it in. They didn't like it because they wanted Damascus steel. But um, Damascus steel, uh, pattern. I drew it on uh, uh, Corel Draw, the artwork, and then I printed uh, that pattern on top of the blades, just like an ink printer. And for you, you would put the electrical tape down, print your papers with all your design. Yeah, it's going to take a long time, but cut it out, pull those pieces off, and do the same thing. That's, with me, when I printed the ink, the ink's not affected by ferric chloride. So I then put the ferric chloride on, acid, wipe it down. Acetone kills the ink. Acetone, and there you go. And that's exactly how I did these blades. Nothing fancy, there's no big machines that did all this. That's something you could do at home. Ferric chloride for Radio Shack, electrical tape, and an X-Acto knife, and a piece of aluminum. 7075, 6061, these are types of aluminum. Doesn't matter. Do a pendant. Do a pendant, round shape, drill a hole, do a pen, pattern on it, and try it. And um, that's how you do the uh, any type of look like this. Uh, any questions at this point as far as fair chloride electrical tape? Oh, actually, for hitting things, how do you deal with the edge? Work at a theater and we have to take plates down then and they like to feed them together and they're always like, only then you have to file the mix up. Well, how we do that in uh, the uh, film industry is we make a lot of the same thing. Um, Twelve sets of blades, hero blades. We also have, uh, and those blades don't see any banging. What they see is close-up shots. Like the, if you saw Deadpool 2, the shot where he's in the train with Cable and he's doing this, that's the hero blades by him with a green screen and uh, it never hits anything. Um, for banging up against uh, things, we use uh, bamboo. It's like flooring material, bamboo sheets, and we machine the bamboo out, and then we paint it uh, metal finish, whether we're gonna use. I used a couple different types of uh, metal uh, chrome that's like an industrial chrome, chrome for uh, plastic parts for automobiles. Uh, you can use what they call outclads, and um, any paint store will have outclads on 
you, there's many, there's even, we've even used uh, Krylon, metallic, uh, chrome, or I think it's silver or chrome, hobby shop, spray on. Believe it or not, that's exactly what they are. Because when you're swinging them around, people don't see that. You know, hell, I had a cop, I have a copy of DP2, and I'm trying to see if this was even worth it, all this detail. And I paused at every, every point where the sword was most visible, and you cannot see anything really. It's too blurry. Oh, that's got to be a letdown. So for you, bamboo. Bamboo sheeting is the way to go, and you can shape it and whatever, and then paint it. And you can bang it and bang it and bang it, and it and it's what it does. It's on the You get the client, well, we use post editing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you um, want to get nicks out, there's nothing you can do. What I do to try and help combat that is I don't make, they do flat edge. Now this, this was used to bang, as you can see. We do a flat edge. But the choreography really is good because they try and bang uh, right on each other like this. So um, what I do is I do a, a 64th radius on a machine, so it's rounded. So it kind of helps a little bit. But, uh, it's not something you're going to get away with. Um, the other thing too is this is uh, very springy. 6061 aluminum, you bend it, it stays like that. Hold it back. 7075 is aircraft grade. What we use it, that's what I use in the industry. You can bend this and it will it will go back. It, it will keep its shape. It doesn't wobble. So Is it a lot harder than shooting? No. 7075, 6061. Beautiful. 6061 is more of a pain because it gums up sometimes if you try to you know, run through it too fast and stuff. Can you to your right? To your left, sorry. Let me ask a question. Oh, that's fine. Uh, well, will the asset work on metal? Yeah. Well, like um, uh, stainless steel or that asset? No, well, will now it, like that? Uh, it's, um, it gets a little tricky with stainless steel stuff. The fair chloride's more for like, you know, copper, aluminum, uh, stainless steel and stuff. You're, you're, you're depending, like I use harsher acids on those metals, you know, because of the nickel content and stuff. So um, stainless, I hate machines. Inconel, well, I hate cheaper more, so. sword and doing it to that. Stainless is a really hard thing to uh, etch with if you're going to use common uh, chemicals and stuff. You have to go to the, the hard stuff. I've got acids in jars that I have to keep the lids off and I put them in the work out of way because it's like they're, they're, they're bad. Yeah, really bad. So, um,